Hello and welcome again. So in the previous lecture, we have seen a way to determine whether a number is a prime number or not. But the problem is that way takes a lot of time. The complexity is order of n. We can reduce that complexity. Now let's see two methods, two more ways that can reduce its complexity. Okay, let's begin a better approach. So let's observe these examples. So I want you to observe these examples. Just observe, just pause the video for some time and observe these examples observes the factors this is 100 these are the factors of 100 this is 150 these are the factors of 150 326 factors of 326 okay these are not prime numbers obviously because they have so many factors but just think about something in the form of factors in the term of factors just think about it pause the video and think about it i hope you did pause the video let me tell you what is the observation can you see that the maximum factor we are getting other than the number itself is n by 2 just see it is never great than greater than n by 2 it is never more than n by 2 in this case it is not exactly 1 by 2 but it is not more than n by 2 what we were doing till now is let's see for 17 for 2 to 16 we were going for 2 to 16 but let me say for 15 the factors are 1 3 5 and 15 for 16 the factors are 1 2 4 8 and 16 can you see there is no factor between 8 and 16 that is from n by 2 plus 1 to n minus 1 there are no factors there are no factors 9 10 11 12 so we are wasting our time in checking whether these factors these numbers can divide 16 or not because after n by 2 if the number is to be divisible it has to be multiplied by these small numbers correct am i correct so if i get 51 the minimum number i need to multiply with to become 100 I do, it does not exist because if I multiply 51 by 2 it will go beyond 100 and we already know that 2 multiplied by 50 is 100 correct similarly from here 75 multiplied by 2 75 multiplied by 2 is 150 76 multiplied by 2 is greater than 150 so if we go beyond n by 2 we will not find any factors we will not find any factors so instead of running our loop from i equals to 2 to n from i equals to to instead of running our loop from i equals to 2 to n what we can do we can simply run our loop from i equals to 2 to n by 2 and this will work as i have explained this will work let's see what are the changes in the code so the only change in the code is in this line here the green box so now we will run from i equals 2 to less than or equal to n by 2 let's see an example so scan of n suppose n is 17 n is 17 previously we ran our loop 16 times for true value and seven, one more time for false value to total we ran our loop sorry for 15 times for true value and one more time for false value so we ran our loop 16 times let's see now how many times we will run our loop in this case let's see flag value is 0 i value equals to 2 i less than equals to n by 2 correct 17 by 2 is how much take the floor value 17 by 2 is nothing but 8 okay 8.5 but using the floor value we will get 8 so it is 2 less than 8 yes 2 is less than 8 it will come inside is 17 mod 2 equal to equal to 0 no it will go i will will increase is 3 less than 8 yes again it will run i, I will become 4 is 4 less than 8 yes 17 no it's not divisible by 4 we know that it will come again i value will become 5 is 5 less than 8 no yes 5 is less than 8 is 17 divisible by 5 no it will go again to i plus plus i will become 6 is 6 less than 8 yes it will check is 17 mod 6 equal to equal to 0 no we will go to i plus plus then it will i will become 7 is 7 is less than 8 yes is 17 mod 7 equal to equal to 0 17 mod 7 equal to equal to 0 or not no it is not equal to 0 so i value will increment to 8 now see i value incremented to 8 is 8 less than equal to 8 yes it is less than equal to 8 because it is equal to 8 so is 17 mod 8 equal to 0 is 17 mod 8 equal to equal to 0 no it is not so now i will, will increment to 9 and now 9 is the false condition 9 is not less than equal to 8 so the condition will become false and for loop will exit we will exit from the for loop now as you can see here the loop runs for how many times let's see so it is n equal uh, the loop the loop variable i runs for 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 previously it ran for 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 till 
16. So we effectively reduced it to half. We effectively reduced it to half. Okay. Now, what is the flag value? Flag value is nothing but zero. So flag value, is, it, it will become false. Flag value is zero. And we will say that 17 is prime. So first we ran for 16 times. Now we ran for eight times. Now the answer is same. Answer is correct. Okay. So we effectively reduced it to half. Fine. Let's see the time complexity analysis. Now we know that it runs for n by two times. Okay. Order of n by two. Asymptotically, it is always equal to order of n. Asymptotically, it is equal to order of n. You guys know about it. Fine. So now what is the problem? The problem is again, we came back to order of n. Asymptotically, we came back to order of n. For large values of n, for example, n is near about 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. For example, this or n equals to 10 to the power of 6. Now, n by 2 is nothing but 5x. So in these values, there is no much difference. There is no much difference in time. Okay. When we compare, there is no much difference in time. So is there any other way? Now we did this. We reduced, effectively reduced the number of loops, the number of iterations to half. But asymptotically, there is no much change. Asymptotically, there is no much change. Now, can we reduce it further? The question is, can we reduce it further? Yes, we can reduce it further. We can actually bring it down to order of root n. We can do this. So think about it, how we can do this. The loop iteration will only run for root n times. Let's see. Let's see the math behind it. Because now this is a mathematical concept. Let's see a math behind it. A much better approach. So we have seen a better approach. Now let's see a much better approach. Okay. For example, let my n be a non-prime number. Be a non-prime number. Okay. So n will have factors. So suppose the factors are a and b. Now for example, n equals to 36. So what can a be? a can be 6, b can be 6. Or a can be 4 and b can be 9. There are other factors also. Correct. So n is a non-prime number, n is 36, a non-prime number, n has factors. For example, the factors are a into b. So how can I write n? I can write n as a multiplied by b, where a is less than b, less than equal to b, and it is less than n. Fine, a is less than equal to b, it is less than n. So there are two cases. What are the cases? a can be equal to b, or a can be less than b. We have both the cases here. In the first case, n equals to a into b, and it can be 6 into 6. It is nothing but 6 square, nothing but a square. Correct? In the second case, it is what? a into b. In the second case, that is a less than b. So it is 4 into 9. So this time, this is actually greater than a square. Greater than a square, not equal to. It is greater than a square. You can check it out. You can check it out. 4 into 9 is nothing but 36. Sorry. Yes, 4 into 9 is 36 and a is 4. A is here is 4. So 4 square is 16. So 36 is greater than 16. So we have two cases. What are these cases? So n can be greater than a square or n can be equal to a square. So n can be greater than or equal to a square. That means a can be less than or equal to root of n. Root of n. So that means a factor of root n, a factor of n will definitely, that is a smaller factor of n will definitely be smaller than or equal to root of n. A smaller factor of n we have two factors a and b one is a smaller factor and one is a greater factor so a greater uh, so smaller factor of n will always be less than or equal to root of n will always be less than or equal to root of n okay let's take some more examples so if a n is a into b and a is a smaller factor and b is a greater factor so if you find a smaller factor the grading factor is simple b equals to n by a it is very very simple to find the greater factor to find a smaller factor, we just need to find the factor between 2 to root n. Between 2 to root n. We do not need to go to n by 2 or n. We can only find the factor till root n. If the factor exists till root n, then its greater counterpart will also exist. Then its greater counterpart will also exist. Let's see this. So these are the same examples that we have seen before. 400. 400. What is root of 100? Root of 100 is nothing but 10. So what we can do for i equals to 2, to 10 we can see if there are factors that can divide 100 if there are factors that can divide 100 and the greater factor will be calculated by b equals to n by a okay let's see that so one is obviously a factor so a equals to 1 so b equals to 100 by 1 so b equals to 100 so we have found a greater factor also for a smaller factor we will have a greater factor okay now let's move forward a equals to 2 a equals to 2 so b equals to 100 by 2 then 2 is a smaller factor, so the bigger factor is 50. So 2, the bigger factor is 
50. Then goes for 5. So for 5, the bigger factor is 20. And 10 into 10 is 100. So it is also a smaller and a bigger factor. So if we go till only 10, it is only 10, i equals to 2 to 10, and find the factors of 100, we can easily find the bigger factors by using this formula. Okay, and this formula is dependent on the smaller factor. So if below this number, below this number, we do not find any factor, there is no chance of finding the factor after this number. Correct? I think this is pretty much clear now. If below this number, we are not getting any factors, then there is no way we can get the factors after, factors after this number. The reason being, these numbers require the smaller numbers to multiply and get the, our actual value. Let's see for 150, the root of 150 is nothing but around 12. Correct? We have to take the base value, the floor value. So around 12. So just check for i equals to 2 to 12. What are the factors? What are the values of a's? So it is 1, 2, 3, 5, 6 and 10. So as you can see here, a value is maximum 10. Then it is 6, 5, 3 and 4. So what are the b values? For 10, if we multiply it by 15, the answer is 150. So b equals to 150 by 10, it is nothing but 15. So for a value 10, our b value is 15. Okay, we do not need to do anything else. We can use this formula to get our larger factor. But a smaller factor is always present below or equal to less than or equal to root of n. Is always present less than or equal to root of n. In, the, in this case, root of 150, which is less than n equal to 12. So we have seen less than or equal to 12, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 factors. And when we multiply them, we will get 150 with a bigger factor. Okay, so let's now see this, 326. The root of 326 is around 18 around 18 so below 18 there are just 2 and 1 that can divide 326 and 2 multiplied by 163 will give me a 326 okay for 333 the root is around 18 again so below 18 the only numbers that can divide 333 are 9 and 3 okay and we, if we multiply 9 with 37 we will get 333 and 3 with 111 we will get 333 so if i do not get any number below this there is no way I will get a number after this. I will get a factor after this because these factors, bigger factors are dependent on the smaller factors. So now we can run our loop from i equals to 2 to root of n. I hope you understood why we run our loop from i equals to 2 to root of n. Let's see. So the only change here is i less than equal to square root of n. From the previous one, the change is i is less than equal to square root of n. Okay. Or you can also write in the same program, you can write i into i is less than or equal to n. So it is same, correct? i square is less than or equal to n or i is less than or equal to root of n. It is same, the root square becomes here. Okay, so now let's see the difference. Let's see the difference. Now you know how this loop will run. Okay, I have shown you two to three times how this loop will run. Let's see the time complexity analysis. So obviously here, this time the it is order of root n, order of root n. Now let me show you what is the actual difference. What is the difference in it? So for example, n is 1000. n is 1000. So n by 2 became 500. Correct. Now what is root n? Root n will be around 31. Root n will be around 31. So if in the first case, our loop iterate 1000 times. In the second case, the loop will iterate only 500 times. But in the third case, see the difference. The loop will iterate only 31 times. Let, let it, it will get more interesting. Let's see. So n is 10,000. So n by 2, it will iterate for 5000 times. But for root n, it will only iterate for 100 times. Can you see the difference now? For example, n equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Correct? So n by 2, it will be nothing but 5 lakh. But root n, it will be nothing but 1000, just 1000. It is 5 lakh and it is 10 lakh, but it is nothing but 1000. So this is the actual difference. This is the actual difference. This code is very much optimal. It is a optimal code for finding, for determining whether a number is prime or not. Whether a number is prime or not. Okay. So this is order of root n. And you can see the difference in order of root n. Fine. So after this, now we are done with determining whether a number is prime or not. Now we will see if I want to print a number from 2 to 100, print all the prime numbers, how I will do. Or from 2 to 500, how I will do. Or from 2 to 1 lakh, how I will do. How I will print the number till a certain point. Till a certain point, print all the prime numbers. How we will do this. So we will see the algorithms in the next videos of how we will do this part. Okay. How we will print the numbers till a certain limit. Till a certain limit. Thank you.